Hi there. Now for this next part of the question, remember we were given this curve then y equals f of x and it had these two points here p and q, a maximum here at p and a minimum at q. And the x coordinates of p and q were shown to be given by this equation here tan 2x equals root 2. Now for this question then we've got to give the x coordinates of the minimum point for y equals f of 2x and also for 3 minus 2f of x. Now what I'm going to do is take you slowly through this solution as always but you might want to fast forward where you'll see the full solution at the end of the video. Okay so going back to this question First of all, what we need to do is establish the x-coordinates of the stationary points for P and Q. And then we'll be able to take it further for these two parts here. Okay, so we need to solve this equation, tan 2x equals root 2. So the next step would to be to take the inverse tan to both sides and that would leave us with 2x equals the inverse tan of root 2. And we need to find our solutions for this and so what I'm going to do is turn to a quadrant diagram. So just draw that in here. This will be naught radians and we would turn anti-clockwise to get our solutions. And for the tan of an angle to be positive, we're taking positive root 2 here. Tan is always positive in the first quadrant, so just mark a line in there. And in the third quadrant, so mark a line down there. Making sure that this line here is equally inclined to this horizontal line here. So these two angles would be exactly the same. And I'd mark in that starting from zero here, turning anti-clockwise, then this angle here, which corresponds to this blue angle here, we'll call 2x. That will be one possible solution. And the other one will be to turn from here all the way around anti-clockwise until we hit the line again here. So this will be another solution, which we'll call 2x. Now, if you get on your calculator, make sure you're in radians mode. You'll find that if you take the inverse tan of root 2, you'll get 0.553 and so on radians. And that corresponds to this blue angle in here. Okay, we'll just mark it in here as 0.9553 and so on radians. Okay. So that gives us our first value for 2x. 2x equals 0 0.9553 and so on radians. And then we need this other possible solution, the one in green for 2x. So all we've got to do is carry on half a turn. In radians, that's the equivalent of pi radians. So if I add pi to 0 0.9553, Five, three, and so on, you should get your second answer, which will come out, I'll just put or here, as 4.0969, and so on. Okay, now I need to divide both of these answers by 2 to give me x. So we therefore have x equals, and dividing 0.9553, by 2 you end up with 0 0.4776 and so on and if you divide 4.0969 by 2 you end up with 2.048 and so on okay so these correspond to the x coordinates of p and q and p obviously is this first coordinate, okay, so that's the x coordinate of p, and 2.048, because it's greater than that value, corresponds to the x coordinate of q. Now that we've established the x coordinates of p and q, when it comes to looking at this graph here, y equals f of 2x, we've got to 
be familiar with transformations of graphs. And what this does to any graph is it causes it to stretch by a scale factor of a half parallel to the x-axis with the y-axis being invariant. So if you were to sketch that, you're going to get a graph that looks something like this, okay? This point here, Q, has been pushed up, if you like. It's, it's the distance to the y-axis has been halved. So that's the point that we're interested in here, this minimum point here. And so all we need to do is take the x-coordinate of Q and divide it by 2. So I'll just put in here that therefore the min okay, uh, at x okay, equals 1.024. I've just divided this result by 2. And if I round this to, say, three significant figures, we're going to get 1.02 to 3 SF, three significant figures. OK. Now, when it comes to this next graph, I'm going to break this down. OK, we're just going to take our original graph, y equals f of x. And if I put a 2 in the front of it, what that does is it stretches the graph by a scale factor of 2 parallel to the y-axis with the x-axis being invariant. So what you're going to get is a graph looking like this. Okay, y equals 2 f of x. The point p has been pulled out by a factor of 2 here. And the point q, the minimum point q on y equals f of x is pulled down by a scale factor of 2. All right. Now, when I put a negative in the front of this, minus 2f of x, the minus causes a graph to be reflected in the x-axis. So I'm looking at reflecting the green graph here in the x-axis, and you're going to get a graph looking something like this. So the minimum point now becomes the maximum point that was up here. That was the point... Uh, P. And you'll notice it's all in line here. So the x coordinate of this point down here is the same as the x coordinate of P. So that's the graph of y equals minus 2 f of x. Now putting a 3 at the front here just causes this graph to be translated upwards by 3 units. So if I was to sketch that in, Maybe it's going to look something like this, okay? I'm not too sure what three units is going to look like on this scale, but what I do see is that this minimum point here corresponds to the x-coordinate that we had at P, okay? So, therefore, I can use that result then and just say that the minimum point here at x, okay, is going to be 0 0.478 to three significant figures. It's the same as the x-coordinate of P that we found up here. Okay, so I hope that's been of some use to you. And uh, that brings us to the end of this particular question. So thanks for listening and uh, hopefully I'll see you on another video.